Right. Off for its first MOT. Right, let's see if we go first. That's good. <laughs> For those watching who are not in the UK, we can legally ride quad bikes on the road. It's a strange thing with the way they're registered there though. They have to be MOT'd, insured and road taxed. But they appear to be classed when imported now as a tractor, as a T3, whereas it used to be classed as an L7. As a T3 now, it appears when they come in, they have to be restricted down to about 40 kilometers an hour but you can ask the supplier to provide you with an ECU to up the mileage so it goes up to what it used to be which was 90 kilometers an hour but they'll charge you an extra 250 quid for it so I'm not really sure what's going on with that I mean, it does seem rather strange to me Now this is the only thing because we've got to look across this lot and get in a right hand lane ideally. Without getting squished. Right, should be alright. Get out before that lorry. Uh, should have selected four wheel drive I think to get out there. A very popular meet up spot for four wheel drivers this, five ways. Saturday or Sunday morning, we'll get them all meeting down here in McDonald's. And in the work day, I'll come down here in the mornings and charge the old electric car up over there, which is really handy because I work about 100 miles away and I have to spend two hours of my day charging the bleeding thing. And I still ain't got enough energy to get home. Come on, Gil. Quick life saver there. <coughs> Alright, now we're across the 811. I can unclench me buttocks now. Right in the drift um, XL camera, and this is the extended mic, which is a waterproof connector, but I've only kind of bodged it in here at the moment. But it's right by the vent on the helmet, and although it's got a woolly condom on it. I'm not sure if it will actually filter out the noise. Hopefully it will. Take a left here. <coughs> so we're going to pick up and go up an old plane called Ignild Way, which I've done a video on. was recently graded. Oh, it's been graded up to here anyway. I suspect that right hand track has ripped the shit. Let's have a look. Yes. been on this side pissing it up as well for fuck's sake you're gonna dig holes with fucking knobbly tar stay on one side fuck it up on both sides yeah, that's our little breakfast spot normally we sit there I've seen some wild campers in there occasionally at night quite brave because I quite often come out here and hear rifles cracking across there from the gamekeepers. <laughs> There's a reason you don't want to be camping in these grounds. 
everyone comes out to play. Angle here, I might have to uh, oh, queue up here a bit. Like one, I think. <sighs> Normally, I'd go straight across the field, road straight into the field, but that's going to be an absolute quagmire over there, I'd imagine, if it's uh, not frozen. So we will actually zip down the road a bit. That is the legal byway across there. So on the left there is Icklingham. Done a video on that lane I think as well. In front of us is the big puddle that people come and play in. But I'm not going through that. We're going to keep up old Barnum slip. A new Barnum slip. Cut out out the top. Since I've been green laning, which ain't that long, only about four years now. Um, I've only ever got stuck, well, I've not got stuck at all because I wasn't stupid enough to come down here. I've only ever come down here when it's been almost impassable and impassable for most vehicles. One year and it flooded down the bottom here and everyone come down and played in it and dug it and it was nearly a metre deep. And uh, Suffolk Council were on about closing it but we actually volunteered and came down here with a load of shovels to put some fencing up on the left hand side to stop people going through the woods and accidentally while we were doing the fencing we accidentally pushed some of the sand back into the holes to make it passable again so it didn't get sharp so it's a good job there were so many boots and shovels standing on the side because that managed to push all the sand back into the ruts and fill them up which is a good um, byproduct of putting the fencing up because obviously we wouldn't be able to come down here and do roadworks on it in a triple SI track let's just pull over for a second because I think I'm all right on time oh. There's the old girl now. So this is her first MOT she's going to. I got her in January 20, which is great. Because I just managed to get her home, get it sorted, get her insured. And then Covid dropped on us. And I couldn't go out and ride the thing, which was a bit of a pisser. Although I did used to go down the shops. Uh, I uninsured one of the cars. Sawned it and use this, which is fun, queuing outside the shops. Back box is good, and she's good. So she's a 2019 model, although registered in 2020. 500cc single, I think 38, 38 horsepower, I think. And um, I think this is the last of the twin lock ones. So she's two wheel drive, four wheel drive, and she's twin locks as well. So let's turn it off because we usually got. A... Here we go. Look. Here we go. It's not uncommon to see them. So, but like I say, she's a good old girl, first MIT, she's due for a, a service and a new drive belt which I've got at home, so she's got 4,000 miles on her now on the original drive belt, so I do want to change it, I've measured it a couple of times, it's still within its wear limit, there's no cracks or nothing in it, but 
and I'm going to replace it. So, but she's uh, she's a good good uh, good cord. A lot of flack off the the haters normally. Oh, it's Chinese rubbish, blah 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 blah. But uh, she's bloody good. The only problem I've had is a rubber grommet in the steering disappeared. It descended to to crumble to bits. There's like a little star rubber washer that fits between the drive motor on the electric steering and the gearing and that disintegrated and that seems to be a bit of a common issue so I just bought a couple of them it takes 20 minutes to change it so it's not a big job and the battery died on it um, a couple of months ago well the last time it came out actually it broke down and we couldn't restart it so um, and all the electronics were going zippy and bungle and everything so but um I've been read some of the comments on forums previously. I thought that's probably the battery, so we we swapped one off. A friend of mine, so we put his battery on it, started up straight away. So I ordered a new battery on it and slapped it back on there. So to be honest with you, three years on a battery ain't bad. Anyway, let's get to the garage. Oh. And get a MOT'd. There is another byway over there, which is Angel's Way, um, but it's a dead end. A lot of people don't know it's a dead end because they cut through the bloody corner. It goes down to a footpath width at the end. And they jump on there and then it pops out a big hole, what they call the bomb hole, near uh, the A11. But that is actually a footpath, it isn't a, it isn't a byway open to all traffic. It is a footpath. You can go down this bit, but you have to turn around and come back. No customer parking. this last time <laughs> no I can't get out Mark <laughs> okay we might need a bit of four-wheel drive we might need a little bit of four-wheel drive to get out of that one there we go right need four-wheel drive. Hey, right. 
back in, keeps walking into the big ruts. So when we come up, before we got the Barnum slip, I said there's a big puddle that I don't go through, and that'll be the one in front of me. Which we've just come round the other way, and it is too cold. That is the legal route. This is so fucked up now, I'm going to just cut round the corner of the puddle, so I don't fucking drown the quad.